Hello and welcome to another episode of the Cast Distillery Podcast, where we unlock the full potential of ServiceNow with expert insights and practical strategies. You're only going to get this here on the Cast Distillery Podcast. And I've got another just amazing guest with me today, Michelle Hedrick, who is in charge of our app development division. We're going to be talking to her about generative AI on, you know, with low code capabilities in service now and what that looks like. But before I get into that, I wanted to give a little intro into Michelle and her background. She is a multi-year, multi-team program manager and has been doing this for many, many years. She's been in the application space for over 20 years, dealing with business intelligence and data warehousing and learning. Really, she's been involved in some of the most impactful applications here at CASC. Uh, in federal, state, and local, and commercial spaces. I, I want to give you a warm welcome, Michelle, to the podcast. Thanks for, for coming on and taking time out of your out of your schedule. Uh, thanks, Sean. It's so great to be here. I've loved watching all these podcasts. They're um, super fun watching, the, watching everybody and their different take on all, all the amazing things coming out. Yeah, it's, it's honestly a privilege to be able to be here with all the, the great uh, people that have come on, including yourself, and talking about these things and bringing value to our clients and our potential clients and listeners of the podcast. So with that, let, let's get into this. So this is a hot subject right now is generative AI, AI. And, you know, I, I know, I think most people know open AI as far as, you know, chat GPT and all that stuff. But it's a new thing coming into service now. So what I wanted to do for those that aren't familiar uh, from your viewpoint, talk about, first of all, what what is generative AI and w what does that look like right now? Yeah, so hopefully um, many people have been in playing around with <laughs> chat GPT yeah. and some of the other tools. Um, yeah, generative AI is just what it sounds like. So it's um, it's artificial intelligence that actually generates content. Um, and in some cases, that content is documents or, um, you know, agenda, an agenda for a meeting. I use it for that uh, every once in a while. But it could also be code um, and workflows. And so that's what's really exciting is um, it's a tool to really kind of help take us to the next level. Um, I remember, you know, being in college before Google was really a thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I know that puts a, puts a, you know, kind of dates me a little bit, but it's pretty cool to see um, how people are embracing generative AI and, and um, some of the impacts that we see already. Yeah, I, I remember. <laughs> I remember on our pre-call we were talking about Ask Jeeves. If anybody remembers that, it ages <laughs> yeah. both of us. It's before Google. Before Google. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think about Boy, my kids. Honestly, they, they don't have a clue. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, so with that in mind, you know, how are you seeing generative AI within service now in the ecosystem now? Yeah. So. Um, you know, you see it all the way across the platform and all the different workflows. We we kind of focus in in the application build on the creator workflow side, um, but there, it's definitely hitting the the IT workflows in terms of like the agent and helping the agent um, with their day to day, mm -hmm. and then also um, in in HR. So I think we'll see it everywhere. But on the creator side, it really helps us build things. It helps us build things faster, right? So um, so one of the things we're really leaning into is text to code. Um, and then text to, to workflow, which is um, pretty exciting for us because I think um, one of the things we also talked about is how do we uh, how do we use it? So we're not really replacing our developers, right? But we're helping them do their their job better and augmenting them. And um, it's really about getting um, tools into our users' hands faster, so we can get that fast feedback loop going. Yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, you kind of answered this within that. Uh, is how one of my next questions was, you know, how is generative AI going to impact low code development? And it just helps get results faster, essentially. But is there anything else beyond that that you've seen that that is benefiting, you know, low code development? Yeah, for sure. So our developers have been using ChatGPT quite a bit, mm -hmm. like kind of since it came out, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, we all we are all like in there using it, um, I think, quite a bit. But what they find is um, the code that it generates doesn't necessarily fit like ServiceNow best practices. Yeah. 
Um, it doesn't necessarily um, use the right syntax for, um, for what we need. And so having it embedded in the platform is going to be huge because we know that the code that it, that it um, gives us is, um, is going to fit best practices and it is going to um, use the right syntax. So, so that's super exciting. Um, I think some of the other things that we see um, are, um, are really like the whole workflow, like being able to, to visualize that sooner and faster um, is huge because again, like, and we had this conversation earlier, but when we're, when we're building things inevitably, we can talk through a user story. We can like diagram a flow out perfectly. Mm -hmm. And then when we get folks in there, they're like, Oh, that wasn't what I really, what I really wanted. <laughs> so um, being able to generate that stuff faster is, is, is going to be huge. Um, so yeah, those are some of the things that we're, we're pretty excited about. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we talked about that, like getting a proof of concept, getting that end to end view quicker. Cause normally we go through workshops and stories and demo yeah. uh, or de sorry, dev sprint, then demo. And then it's like, well, we didn't realize that's how it was going to look. And we're like, but it was, that's the way we described it. That's the way we workflowed it out. So do you, uh, and, and you might not know, but I was curious, do you have a percentage that you could say like in, in general, we think we're saving about this much m amount of time, thus getting results faster. Is there a time there that you've been seeing? Yeah, that's really tough. I think um, generally we like to have something in our customers' hands about two weeks in. Um, I think maybe not in the first couple of releases, but where we're seeing ServiceNow go, I really think that we're going to be able to generate uh, some sort of proof of concept in the conversation, like immediately. So we're talking about moving from that very first kind of iteration, those two weeks up to like, we're, we're having more functional people build those things up front. Um, yeah. we see that a little bit with like citizen development, right? The new mm -hmm. low code tools that service now has produced. If we can have somebody functionally in the, in the, um, first kind of workshop building it right then. Um, yeah, that, so that time is two weeks, um, sooner. And, uh, I think we'll just see that, um, go faster and faster. Um, yeah, as we, as we build. Yep. And so uh, we've talked about end to end and, and proof of concept. Um, and I know that this will impact users, but I was curious what your thoughts on how, how can this impact the end user experience or the customers going into service now, not necessarily the admins, but what are your thoughts on that? Like, what is it going to do and how is this going to benefit users? Yeah, I think the sky's the limit. It's almost hard to just imagine all the things. I think it'll it'll impact everything um, from, you know, getting the users into a knowledge base article or videos to help them um, when they're kind of stumbling through um, a process on the other side of the keyboard um, to actually embedding AI into the workflow. So um, starting to generate things for the users as they're as they're asking for them. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's going to be really cool to see. Um, and we'll see it in the next few releases of ServiceNow, which is which is really neat that they can, you know, kind of embed some of that generative um, development, especially around um, knowledge based circles um, really, really quickly. Uh, I think it's going to be all about, um, getting them help faster and then making a more intuitive, um, user experience. So from their perspective, in some cases, they might not even know, um, that AI is doing things like directing yeah. them into the right places. Um, so yeah, that's yeah. going to be, it's going to be really, really great for the user experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think an AI search for the user, you know what I mean? Like if, it, oh, yeah. if it's on and enabled and it's mature, they get their answers quicker. So I see it totally helping out there, uh, you know, yeah. and it's so new. A lot of people don't realize what that really means. I mean, they see the announcement at Knowledge. They see the news articles and uh, NVIDIA and ServiceNow. What does all of it mean? Like, what does it really mean to me? So that's where the question came from. So that's that's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have you seen any uh, I had a note about any data around productivity gains, and I guess it's more around the dev. Um, but the way I'm seeing it right now is you're you're looking at like a framework, and uh, generative AI is really an assistant. So you still have to have the skill set to get into it to tell it what to do. But have you seen anything around productivity gains when even in citizen development that you've seen so far? 
Yeah, it's and it's not just per, um, productivity, but almost like uh, it's a, it's enabling us to be more um, collaborative, right? So mm. different skill sets able to get in and, and do things, whereas before we needed a pro code developer to do um, X, Y, Z. Um, yeah, we're going to speed their work up um, a, a great amount. And that's and that's great for them. Um, they're going to have access to code snippets and everything else that they need faster. Mm-hmm. But really, it becomes more of a collaboration with less um, less technical people that aren't maybe necessarily pro code, but they know the business, right? They really yeah. understand the business well. And so we used to have kind of, you know, business analysts that sat in between um, those two folks and, and helped to translate um, I think more and more you're going to see business analysts and people in the business being able to build their own um, their own applications and mm-hmm. and then go to the pro code side when they need to augment that even further and and, and push the limits a little bit. Yep. So yeah, that makes sense because I, I remember I did citizen development not within ServiceNow but it was another another platform and I remember going to like things like forums stack overflow you know grabbing stuff but it would always be a little bit broke like not just so you might be able to tweak it but you might not be able to so (laughs) it makes sense yeah uh so we've talked about so far we've talked about advantages but there's there uh, to me there's a fear an element of fear with ai and we've we've talked a little bit about it even in this conversation but you know with all the advantages do you see any disadvantages to generative AI within ServiceNow? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be the same kind of disadvantages that we saw when things like access databases and, and Excel spreadsheets became um, just accessible to everybody, right? When things are accessible to everybody, you have to be careful about governance. Um, you have to think about, you know, how do I make sure mm-hmm. that, um, that my data... <laughs> is accessible to the right people um, that um, that we're not violating any kind of, um, you know, um, things in terms of security and, and protecting your business. Um, so I think that, you know, you have to be careful about those types of things. And then also just app sprawl, yeah. <laughs> making sure that you kind of know what's happening where in the, in the business and that you're not, um, you're not just kind of generating, um, 5 million one-offs and, um, and that you still kind of have that single pane of glass view to your business, I think are, are huge. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. Also, it's understand. like, it's easy to build the wrong workflow, right? So it's yeah. easy for somebody that, you know, if you just have kind of a myopic view and you're building it and um, putting that out into the world, well, um, you got to make sure that you're being super collaborative and that you understand um, exactly uh, all of the things that you need to, to build in. Yeah, so making we, easier, we actually so. have some episodes that are surrounding that a little bit about how to eliminate yeah. painting yourself into a corner with custom apps yeah. and when to do it. So, yeah, we're we we've been on that thought and we've been trying to, you know, give the listeners that view of of development. And, and you mentioned governance, too. It's thinking the big picture. You know, what, what are we doing? Yeah. Why are we doing it type thing? Um, yeah. So. In your eyes, what I wanted to ask you what your thoughts are, you know, what's next? You know, what what can customers look forward to uh, with generative AI in, in your eyes and in where 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 do you see us going with it? Yeah, I mean, I think in the next few releases, um, what's really exciting is the ease of deployment across like um, using AI to help us to actually get into more of a DevOps kind Mm -hmm. of um, mindset. Um, So easing those deployments, I think is, um, is like now it's, it's going to happen with app engine management um, center and some of the other um, things that are coming out with app engine. And, um, and again, I think it's the embedding of, um, of really start, starting to see AI in with those low code tools, um, mm-hmm. at least from, from the creator workflow side. So again, making it more accessible to everybody and, um, and just speeding up the process of, of building things. Um, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's happening now. So really exciting. That's good. Um, so, I mean, that's my list of questions on, you know, for, for you. Is there anything I missed or anything you'd like to add to the conversation? Uh, anything you're seeing, anything you're experiencing, anything you'd like to share? 
Yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting talking to our developers about this, right? Because I think there's this kind of fear um, about AI coming to take our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> and so, and, and, and that's legit. I mean, our jobs are going to change, right? Mm -hmm. But I do think, um, you know, earlier this year, I had kind of a... Um, a health uh, scare. I was diagnosed with cancer. And so mm. during the course of that, um, my husband works in, in data and analytics um, in healthcare and kind of getting to know how they're using AI to augment healthcare has been fascinating. I think mm. we're going to see the same thing on the application development side. And what I know is like, I still want my doctor on the other end of that, right? I still want somebody that understands um, what my care needs to look like, who I am as a human being, you know, why those things are important. I think we'll see the same thing where um, AI is not going to replace us. It's going to augment us. It's going to make us um, faster. It's going to make us better at our jobs. Um, and it's going to, you know, it's really going to transform the way we do things. Um, but I think it'll be for the better um, ultimately. And I do understand kind of the sci-fi scary, the machines are coming for us. Um <laughs> Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> and I don't discount that so, there's some very legitimate, you know, fears around uh, around AI. But I think um, I think for the most part, this is this is really exciting and um, and it's really going to be um, cool to see what happens. I don't think we can really um, know right now. Uh, so, yeah. Well, great. Thanks for that insight. And thanks again, yeah. Michelle, for, for taking time out of your schedule. And I, I wanted to take a second for our listeners is also to ask a favor. Could you do us a favor and like and share our content? And also, we'd love to hear from you as well. We'd love to hear about things that you want to see from Cask in the Distillery Podcast and other ideas and, and things that we can bring to you as value. So let us know, like and share. And thanks a lot for joining us for this episode of uh, the Distillery. Bye.